everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Live from Broadway's Calling on the Red Carpet. This is where we find out where your favorite Broadway stars, where they were when they got the call to be on Broadway the very first time. Now, y'all, it only happens once, but we are here to get that story. But this week, if you can tell by my Foster Grant, is a very special episode. Broadway stars have been crossing over for decades onto television and film, but we are seeing a large amount of stage actors not only appearing on films, but making a damn good showing at the Academy Awards. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, later, our Hollywood representative and our tech producer, Julie Garnier, will join us. And But right now, Broadway Bites is... Andrea Boyer joins me as we get you full of Oscar and Broadway trivia so that you can win our online Oscar contest coming next week. Ladies and gentlemen, on the red carpet is Andrea Boyer. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Oh my goodness. Well, this is going to be an exciting year for the movies, right? It sure is. I mean, the Academy Awards have come so far. The, the first award, if uh, a lot of people out there probably already know this, but it was given back in 1929. And uh, the first Best Actress winner, and it excites me because I've actually met her, uh, Janet Gaynor. And you uh, probably have seen her in the original A Star is Born. Uh, she would later make her Broadway debut uh, in the, the, they made a stage play version of the cult movie, Harold and Maude in 1980. Mm -hmm. And there she was. And it was so exciting uh, to meet her. She's a little, little thing. Um, but I knew who she was from uh, the old movies. And it was just very exciting. She was like one of the very first classic Hollywood movie stars that I won, uh, that I got to see. Uh, now, what was fascinating is that she was the only actress who was who won the Academy Award for three films, so it was for her breadth of work. Um, and then 10 years later, Hattie McDaniel won Best Supporting Actress for Gone with the Wind. Now, unfortunately, because she was African-American, she wasn't allowed to sit in the ballroom, um, but when her category did come up, they, they let her, uh, she and her date sit in the back of the room. Uh, it was sad, but I'm telling you, um, to see the graciousness of this woman. And we do have her acceptance speech by Adam McDaniel. I'm really especially happy that I'm chosen to present this particular plaque. To me, it seems more than just a plaque of gold. It opens the doors of this room, moves back the walls, and enables us to embrace the whole of America, an America that we love, an America that almost alone in the world today, recognizes and pays tribute to those who give their best, regardless of creed, race, or color. It is with the knowledge that this entire nation will stand and salute the presentation of this plaque that I present the Academy Award for the best performance of an actress in supporting roles during 1939 to Hattie McDaniel. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science, fellow members of the motion picture industry and honored guests. This is one of the happiest moments of my life. And I want to thank each one of you who had a part in selecting me for one of the awards. For your kindness, it has made me feel very, very humble. And I shall always hold it as a beacon for anything that I may be able to do in the future. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. And may I say thank you and God bless you. Oh, it was, it was historic. It was so, isn't that, I mean, I just love, love that speech. And I love her in the movie. And uh, 92 years later, and it's the first time that there are minority actors in every single acting category. So I say... Hashtag 
Oscars so diverse because these actors finally, because of the work that uh, Hattie McDaniels uh, laid out, they will all have a seat at the Oscar table. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and Broadway is represented all over the place. Yes. But Glenn Close. Mm -hmm. Yay. Viola Davis. All right now. Carrie Mulligan. Mm. Oh, nurse. Yeah. The movies range from dramas to dramas and even more dramas. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the comedies? <laughs> now, Andrea, have you seen any of those movies? Uh, which ones have you seen? I did see Hillbilly Elegy. And I oh. have to tell you, that was um that was inspiring. I really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, Glenn Close's makeup was phenomenal. And how it, she embodied that woman. I and mean, when you see the real woman at the end of the picture and you see yeah. it, it, it looks like Glenn Close has actually taken the soul of that woman. And I just, was just going to say that. I feel like I'm seeing the same person. It was right. fabulous. Yes. So, so good. Yeah. Any of the other movies mm -hmm. you've seen? Oh, hello, Julie. Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, Happy uh, Oscars uh, week. Yeah. Happy Oscars week, Julie, our tech uh, director, and also out there uh, in, in Hollywood, California, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and Andrea is in California as well. I'm I'm holding down the East Coast right here. <laughs> <laughs> You're our East Coast correspondent. I'm actually in North Hollywood right now. Oh, my so God. So close. I, I love yeah. it. So, Julie, have you seen any of the Best Picture uh, nominees? So far, I've only seen Nomadland. So I have a whole, this whole week, I need to catch up. I need to see everything. And I can't wait. I've got everything like ready to go in my living room on my big flat screen TV. I'm going to make a movie night of every night this week and really just try to catch up for the, for the broadcast on Sunday. Oh, next Sunday is going to be very exciting. Well, this is the week to do it. And it's so easy now because, you know, uh, the movies are either on Amazon, they're on Netflix, they're on Hulu. I mean, there are so many ways to see these movies right now. So I hope that everyone just says, I'm going to watch these movies because we have a, a little treat for you, don't we, Julie, next week? Yes, we have our Oscars contest this week. So if anybody wants to enter the Oscars contest, there's going to be a ballot available. It's going to look a little something like that. And it's going to be at the end of the broadcast. It'll be available after the broadcast. Is there yeah. any purchase necessary or what, what do we need to do? How do we get, how do we get involved? Yeah, there's no purchase necessary. Absolutely not. But there will be prizes. Yeah. So if you go to our website, which is broadwayscallingtv.com and fill out the ballot by Friday, April 25th at midnight Eastern time, which is where Lance is. Lance is mm -hmm. over there. Um, <laughs> so if you go to broadwayscallingtv.com, which way? Uh, and, and fill out the ballot, uh, you'll be entered into our Oscar contest. Right. And the ballot, it's not up yet. It will be up later on today. That's um, right. But uh, so don't like go there during the show. We want you to stay here because we have tons, tons of things uh, for you. But the prizes, ooh, the prizes are your choice of one of these three things. One is the Playbill Binder. Mm. which you can put all of your playbills in. And we have offered this as part of charity, uh, things like that. But we'll actually, we're going to give it away to one of our top three winners if they choose that. We also have the Broadway's Calling lapel pin that Julie, Andrea, and I are all wearing. It's beautiful. Uh, and I, I still love the workmanship that uh, this mm -hmm. company did. I really love how they got, they even got the, the blue the sequin. Sparkle. Yeah, yeah, the school oh, of it. so soulful, you guys. It's all awesome. winning, Lance Roberts. Yes, I know. <laughs> so I mean, it was like it's so so cool. Um, and also, if you want to write us a note, you can get the Broadway's Calling ink pen right there. Uh, just one of them, or something very very new: the Broadway's Calling notebook, which I love. It's actually what I write the notes to. Um, for the show every week and I use it. It's like, it's sort of like my favorite thing now. Um, we have all of this 
technology and I still love having my notebook. It's like my quick things, I just write it down. It seems like when I actually write things down, I really remember them as opposed to if I put it in my phone or I, or I, you know, I like leave me a quick message or something. But when I write it down, I really, um, uh, I really remember it. And I also, it's like one of those things when I'm lying in the bed at night and I like come up with something like I have to like talk to Julie or Andrea, I write it down on this piece of paper. And then I look at it in the morning, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to give them that. I have to talk to them about that. But just remember out of all the prizes, it's one prize and one winner per email. And the top three with the largest amount of correct answers will win. So there you go. Oh, so we have to listen closely, right, everybody, to Lance and I for clues to the trivia questions. Yes, they'll be all throughout the show. <laughs> you can do well, that. I can't wait to hear them all. I'm going to go run this thing. So you both break a leg. Have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So when it comes to the ballot, um, you know, we'll have more than just the actors on the ballot and, of course, the mm -hmm. trivia questions. Um, but today, we're only going to talk about the four top categories, and those are Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, excuse me, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Supporting Actress. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't have had that champagne before the show. I'm already <laughs> ready. And as I said before, some of the trivia answers will be throughout today's episode. So pay close attention. All right. So let's get to the nominees. We have mm -hmm. Best Lead Actor is Riz Ahmed, mm -hmm. Chadwick Boseman, Anthony Hopkins, Gary Oldman, and Stephen Young. So, Lance, who's your pick? Oh, well, I mean, they've actually all worked on the stage, either whether it's London or Ch Chicago, but Anthony Hopkins was in Equus on Broadway. So my Broadway's calling pick to win has to go to Anthony Hopkins for The Father. I'm just... I'm I'm sorry. I mean, this this actual <laughs> category is chock full of trivia uh, because there are two previous Oscar winners, hmm. Anthony Hopkins and Gary Ho Oldman. Did you know that, Andrea? I you know it's funny. I I remember Gary Oldman because it was for uh, what was that great the uh, the Dark Hour, right? Yes, right. I loved him in that. But Thank I have to you tell you, me. the first time I remember him as an actor was mm -hmm. in Ron Stroker's Dracula. <laughs> Yes, he's so good in that movie. That movie I was is thinking, I'm like, epic. Dang, he makes Dracula hot. That's what I was thinking when he I was saw so that. Good. And I saw him first in Sid and Nancy. Oh, way my God. back. Whoa. Yeah, wow. that, was a, that was a great movie. But also the trivia that's in the best actor category. We have um, two actors with Asian heritage, Riz and Steven. And Riz is the first Muslim to be nominated in the best lead actor category. So that's very exciting. Oh, now, yeah. the uh, final bit of trivia is a, a little, uh, little sad, but if Chadwick Boseman wins, he will follow in the footsteps of the first uh, posthumous award winner. And that was Peter Finch for mm -hmm. Network. Um, so who would you pick, Andrea? Oh, goodness. Best lead actor? Well, I kind of be like Julie and catch up at all the movies this week. Uh huh. But I'm fascinated to see Sound of Metal. I oh, just yeah, me too. I I don't know. I just have this hunch. Mm -hmm. I have that hunch because that's the one I'm. It's on my list for the first one to see. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to go with Riz. Okay. All right. Just just from the feel of it. Yeah. Um, I just love to see like any people in the chat if anyone has like a best actor pick. I would love to know. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, Doug Den uh, Denoff, Broadway producer, had never seen Hattie McDaniel's acceptance speech. Oh. I know, Doug, it's really beautiful and it's so historical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there were good things that happened at that moment, some not so good things, uh, but it's great that we have that uh, to sort of like know that, you know, uh, the actress who uh, introduced Hannah McDaniel was Faye Bainter, 
uh, actress, Google her. Uh, but I loved what she said. And it was so, yes. here they were all already in 1939, realizing the importance of, uh, of, of being inclusive and yeah. telling different types of stories. And I think that's what the movies this particular year really has gotten. I mean, from Hillbilly Elegy to Minari to mm -hmm. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I mean, it's a sense of, uh, of you go, well, this is the fabric that creates America. And I think it's represented in our films this year. And that's why I was excited about doing the Oscar show and really like watching the movies and you know, we talk about diversity and, um, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the Stop Asian Hate, and we're just sort of aware and, you know, I, an overused word, but woke. But there's nothing wrong with being woke and awake and just seeing people, hearing people, and, and celebrating uh, so many different voices that we have here in America. This is, that's what makes our country great. You know, I mean, don't you agree, Andrea? Oh, my gosh. I think it's just amazing to see that everybody can go on this platform, whatever, on your social media or movies and whatever, and just show your talents mm -hmm. and and just be around such greatness and other actors and producers and sh either show your story, tell your story, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And that way, everybody just feels like we're all one at some point. We kind of are. I mean, yeah, well, I know it, again, it sounds cliche, but when no, you start hearing cool. people, they come out and interview. I love when they get interviewed. That's my mm -hmm. favorite part. Mm -hmm. You think you know someone just because you see them on a film or a TV mm -hmm. show, right? And then they kind of get exposed whether they're, they're either in a late night show or a daytime like program. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I like that person. Right. And then, well, that, it's sort of what we do here. Broadway's calling is like we show the stars in a different light. And I always say, even on the pen, if you do opt for the pen, it says we get closer because that yeah. is the thing. It's like when these interviews and you see these actors, you see their real personalities and you see, of course, everybody is the same. Everybody. I see myself things. in a lot of them and what they yeah. think and what they eat or what they think is funny. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, my God. And that, it, I call it likability factor. Yeah. I do. You know, everyone has a likability factor, whether it's really high or in between or really mm -hmm. low. But it's amazing of how much you like people after just them being interviewed. So it's fun. It's a, well, I see Adina Alexander has chosen Anthony Hopkins. Adina Alexander, Broadway star mm -hmm. of Kinky Boots. Um, and uh, we got to do Got to Dance Together. Uh, but she also says Sound of Metal is a great movie, but Anthony Hopkins' performance is so raw and brave and beyond. I'm like, uh -huh. I like cannot wait to see it, uh, you know, with that. Uh, thank you, Adina. Anastasia. Uh, oh, I thought Anastasia had also said Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's like, it's so very exciting to see like the work that some of these people are doing. And I mean, Anthony Hopkins has been, oh. of course, like doing great work. <laughs> so I know. Forever. 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 Yes. Well, let's talk about some of the uh, supporting actresses. Oh my you? goodness. And they're dynamic. And the supporting actresses are Maria Bakalova, Glenn Close, Olivia Coleman. Amanda Seyfried, and Yu Jung Young. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. How does well, one even I mean, work? I mean, I think, I think it's great, you know, that all of these ladies are nominated. I'm a Maria in the, the, uh, the new Borat movie was brave. And I mean, yes. I mean, fantastic. Olivia Coleman uh, in The Father, Amanda in Mank. And Yu Jung Yun in Minari. I mean, these ladies are fantastic. But let me tell you, they can't get the Oscar this year. All right. Yeah. They cannot get the Oscar this year because Glenn Close has to win the Oscar for <laughs> Hillbilly Elegy. Y'all, this woman needs all right. Okay. I'm just right. like. Y'all, y'all know. I mean, she was our first guest, and you know, we were we did the. You know, she is the patron saint. See her picture right back <laughs> there. She's like, you know. Oh, oh you're not biased at all, are you? What are you wearing, sir? You're not what? biased at all. Of what? <laughs> me biased for Glenn Close? What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, what are you talking I about? Shirt. 
What are you talking about? I want Glenn Close y'all to win the Oscar so badly. I really do. It's like it's like when Morgan Freeman didn't have an Oscar. I mean, how can you not have God have an Oscar? So he finally got an Oscar and everything was all right. Well, how can you not have see? See, there we go. Barbara Wilmot, 100% blank <laughs> close. Y'all, how can we not have the goddess of not only cinema, but also the stage and of life and um, not have an Oscar? I'm telling you guys, everything's going to be okay once Glenn Close wins the Oscar. Now, I'm not saying that's what you should choose on your ballot because you, you know, you got to choose who you think will win, not who you want to win. But I'm mm-hmm. saying put that energy out. Glenn Close, <laughs> Oscar, 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 Glenn Close. That's all I've got to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, 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 next week, we will have a more in-depth conversation about the state of the arts on film and on stage um, with a very, very special guest, who I know she agrees with me that this person should win the <laughs> Oscar. Glenn Close should win the Oscar. Um, but here's a teaser of who our guest is going to be next week. <laughs> Now, I don't know if any of you are really good at uh, figuring out who was behind those Foster Grants, uh, but if you can, put it in the chat. And uh, those of you who are just new to watching Broadway's Calling, we would love it if you would become a subscriber because Mm -hmm. we love to build our subscriber family and uh, click the bell and that will tell you when the next show is gonna come. It's like, dun 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 dun, subscribe! Dun 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 dun, dun. click the bell! Dun 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 dun. Who needs a theme song for a movie? I'll just sing it for you. Um, so subscribe and click that bell. Subscribe and click that bell. Oh, so we'll talk about original theme songs later on. Um, but I would love to be a part of that. It's just like, and the Oscar goes to, for Broadway's Calling TV, the theme song by Lance Roberts. I love well, that. No so. other nominees. No <laughs> other nominees. Honestly, You're like Aaron uh, Tveit. what did you say? I'm sorry. You're like Aaron Tveit. I'm just like Aaron Tveit. No other nominees. No other nominees. <laughs> just you. <laughs> yes. Which that is a nail biter. I mean, we don't know when the Tony Awards are going to be, but you know, uh, Aaron Tveit is the only nominee in the Best Lead Actor category. Um, but you would think that, oh, well, he's got it in the bag. But I found mm-hmm. out that. No, 60% of the voters have to choose him in order for him to win. So, oh my God, he might lose to himself. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so that's going to be a nail biter. And we will definitely, definitely have a Tony Award uh, show when that happens. That would be very exciting. And also, just uh, remember that that teaser for next week's guest, which I'm very excited about, uh, we'll talk about her a little later in the program. But I wanted to uh, pull up that Anastasia Bain has good taste. Because oh. she said, <laughs> I saw. She said Glenn Close is a legend. I yeah. agree. I yeah. do see that statement. Yeah. We all agree with that mm-hmm. here. And we love all of the actresses in that category. But I'm sorry, this is Glenn Close land right here. Yes. This is Glenn Close land. I'm sorry, it really is. Um, but anyway, did either of you see uh, the best um, uh, supporting actor performances? Oh my goodness, I have to catch up on that. Hmm. Okay, because. Yeah. Well, um, well, I'll tell you who they were to sort of remind you, because you might have like seen trailers or something. Uh, mm-hmm. We have Sasha Baron Cohen, Daniel Kaluuya, Leslie Odom Jr., Paul Racy, and Lakeith Stanfield. Now, you can always tell who I really want. By my voice. Me too. 
I think we want the same person. So, like, okay, Julie, who would you choose? Leslie, 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 Leslie. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Leslie Autumn Jr. I want him to win so Absolutely. badly. I can't even contain myself. Absolutely. It would be so oh. exciting. Um, one night in Miami, um, I, uh, again, you know, a good friend, you know, we've known each other for years. And um, when I saw the movie, and I didn't want to jinx it, but I was like, it was when he sang uh, the Sam Cooke song at the end of the movie, and he uses his own voice. Um, and Leslie already has a great voice, but he was able to evoke Sam Cooke. Like, I was like, wait a minute. Did, are they using Sam Cooke? No, that's Leslie as Sam Cooke. It was spectacular. It was... It was the moment where I said, he might get an Oscar nomination, but you don't think someone you know is really going to get an Oscar nomination, you know? And then- yeah, It happens. It happened. <laughs> he actually got two. He's also up for uh, best song. song? But, but Yeah, but we'll talk about that later. But um, so Sasha Baron Cohen also always brilliant as Borat. Yes, yes. I, mean, I mean, I'm telling yeah. you, I think- it's so exciting, and he shot a lot of that during the pandemic. But it's also guerrilla filmmaking, which is thrilling because yes. you don't know what's going to happen and how he gets in and out of those situations. Um, one will never know. Daniel Kaluuya, um, oh, I love him. you know, just is always fantastic and one of our rising young um, actors. Mm -hmm. I loved him in Get Out and, and Black Get Panther. Oh, Get Out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Get Out is a classic. Um, I wasn't, I've seen the name Lakeith Sanfield, but I wasn't really familiar with Lakeith. Uh, but when you see his work, you'll go, whoa, I will never forget him. And the same thing with Paul Racy from Sound of Metal. Um, I hear, I have not seen that performance. I hear it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so glad. Um, just, oh, uh, Leslie, he was channeling Sam Cooke. Yes, he was, Anastasia. Absolutely. Um, uh, Paul Racy, I'm very excited about seeing that mm -hmm. because I'm not familiar with his work and, and people were just talking about it. And again, you know, for someone to come from left field with all of these fantastic uh, performances to really rise to the top because it is something, you know, they say it's an honor just to be nominated. Well, I would, I think that is absolutely the truth because there are hundreds of thousands of actors and to be the, the top five in America, that means something. The top five actresses, that means something. So uh, congratulations to all of the nominees. It's, it's so exciting. But if I had to choose, mm. um, I would go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. but who was in Hamilton though? <laughs> <laughs> and so, it looks like Leslie Odom Jr. has to win. I don't have no T-shirt with Leslie Odom Jr. on it. Not like I do for Glenn Close. <laughs> so, so, Leslie, if you want to send a T-shirt, you know, he's busy because he and Nicolette just had another little Odom uh -oh. Jr. <laughs> um, so they're busy doing that amongst all of the Oscar stuff. Uh, but if you want to make a T-shirt and send me, I will wear it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will wear it. Um, but uh, like I said, Leslie has two Oscar nominations this year. And I, I, again, that's so phenomenal. Now, you ladies might not think that this is a big deal because it's the first time because it, it, we've had like people with two, like an acting Oscar nomination and a song nomination, but it's always been women. Hmm. As in yeah. Lady Gaga, mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige, yeah. and Cynthia Revo. Mm -hmm. They're like the only ones. So I'm just saying it's sort of like, history <laughs> that this is happening because it's the first guy ever would That's would him winning an oscar this year make him an egot or is he what's he missing i don't know if he has a grammy, grammy. he should have a grammy didn't he has a grammy for hamilton doesn't he oh my goodness i was just gonna ask that that's funny grammy, oh. Emmy, Tony, oscar emmy he, he does he have, have an emmy. emmy he doesn't he needs have an emmy, emmy yet Yet, yes. Yet. He doesn't have an Emmy yet. Yes. 
Yeah, he can get an Emmy. He can get an Emmy. Of all of them, that's the easiest one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're easy. It's like, come on. There's like a thousand categories. He can figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to go get my Emmy right now. <laughs> we'll find an Emmy somewhere. Oh, my God. Um, well, I tell you, I mean, this is like such such a fantastic treat, just like reliving these movies, reliving mm -hmm. these actors. Um, it just, and it would be a huge treat for me to see my once, in, once on this island castmate go up there for either one, whether it's for song or as an actor, it just, it would be fantastic. Or both. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. just, I'm just saying both. It's okay. Love it. Why not? Right. Then they just, have to those actors. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, treat. Well, I almost forgot that I made a very special Oscar treat. Yummy. What I did. And um, so this is, I'm not going to say what it is, but it okay. was inspired by the inventor of the graham cracker crust oh. and the chiffon pie. He was oh. known as the pie king of Los Angeles by the name of Monroe Boston Strauss. So if anybody can take a guess, and I'll throw in one more hint for you, though. Okay. Historians believe that he named this particular treat off of a famous dance in the 20s, mm -hmm. late 20s, possibly. Oh. Yep. Oh, I, I like that clue. That's a very, mm -hmm. very good clue. Oh. Well, let's see this video and see. What it oh. is. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. One. Before we go on, Andy Skirner just said the funniest thing, and I was thinking the same thing. He said, thank you for not making the pie from the help. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing when I was mentioning, I was like, oh, you should make a pie. And because of who the pie is associated with, it made me think of the pie from the help. So yeah, yeah. I am very happy. But let's see which pie you did make, Andrea. And there's another hidden uh, trivia inside the rest uh, the recipe. A little a little bit in there for you too. Oh, okay. I'll look for it. There you go. All right, it's time for our Broadway bite segment. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy.
Mmm, <laughs> yummy. It was so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that was our tribute mm -hmm. to one of our best actress nominees today. Um, and you could figure that out because that pie was called Andrea. The Black Bottom Pie. <laughs> yes, celebrating one of our greatest actresses in one of the finest films that came out this past year. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, starring Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman. Um, Andrea, did you see your new logo? I did. I got excited. I, I don't know if you could come look. <laughs> I've been like waiting. I was like, oh, because you were you were coming into the broadcast as Julie and I were talking about oh. it, uh, getting ready to put it on there. And I when I made it, I was like, oh, I can't wait till she sees it. You know? <laughs> I'm totally excited. I didn't want to like overreact, but I'm like, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> wait, Julie, can we show the logo again for everyone? Because it's so, I mean, I had fun making it. And so I, I just think it's sort of cute. Can we show that, Julie? <laughs> The, okay, the little legs, the top hat are everything. That's Isn't all that so today. cool? Did you notice he had a Broadway's Calling pin on his top hat? He did. Yes, I did. I saw oh that. Oh my goodness. He, it's he's like, fancy. He is so <laughs> fancy. I mean, we might have to make t-shirts, y'all. Uh, oh, you know, gosh. Because they're so, so cute. It was so cute. Well, that uh, dessert that you made was totally award-winning. Now, I was looking for clues. Now, did... Did I find it? Did I find the clue? An Oscar nominated actress. It was a little tip. Oh, okay. So it was. Uh, <laughs> Has anybody was, caught uh, that? So, right, you know. right. They know. They know. Well, I mean, like I said, it was award winning and, you know, I like a little pun. Um, but now let's talk about the best actresses <laughs> after talking, uh, seeing that wonderful, wonderful pie. Now, this is where I'm torn. Mm hmm. I'm torn. Yep. Well, you know, you know what my choices are, right? I know what your choices are, and here they are. So we've got Viola Davis, Audra Day, Vanessa Kirby, Francis, Francis McDormand, and Carrie Mulligan. Mm -hmm. They are mm. all fabulous and have all won at least one prize. So who are you torn between? Uh, well, I haven't seen Vanessa Kirby. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure she's wonderful. I've heard good things about her. I've actually, I've been trying to find that movie. I haven't actually found it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Carrie Mulligan is always surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. um, though I often confuse her with Michelle Williams. Um, oh, which yes. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I mean, they've both been on Broadway. Uh, they're both young, phenomenal actresses. Uh, mm -hmm. But Frances McDormand, I mean, she oh. has like this like familiarity about her. And, uh, and the fact that she might wear overalls and like a jean jacket to the ceremonies, <laughs> that's, that sort of makes her cool. <laughs> Sounds like something I'll be wearing on the night of the Oscars. You know, well, we can wear that or we can get like all dolled up next week. I mean, what do we do? Do we, I don't know. Do we wear um, like fancy pajamas or do we put on like an evening gown and tuxedo. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. And people have to tune in uh, mm -hmm. next week to see. And um, But also, um, I wanted to, to point out that a lot of people didn't know that Frances McDormand is also a Broadway person, a Tony Award winning Broadway person. Mm -hmm. um, and so is Viola. Yes. And Viola is sort of on her way to becoming iconic when it comes to film. Um, but I have to say, Andre Day, she just allowed, it was similar to what Glenn Close did, where she allowed to uh, allowed Billie Holiday to like inhabit her. And it's like watching that film, I just, it was sad, but I, I it was like a, a train wreck that, you know, you just like, you had to watch, you had to keep like watching yeah. her. And, um, and the fact that she did, she also did the vocals. She did yeah. the Billie Holiday vocals and that's not hard to, hard to do, you know, um, no, it is hard to do. Um, so I was very excited about that, but you know, what's exciting. What's exciting? this is the first time that we have had two African-American actresses up for best actress since 1972. Since now, 1972. Yep. And I don't know if any people out there remember 
who were the two African-American actresses mm -hmm. who were nominated. Um, I'll check the chat to see if anyone know, remembers that. Uh, wait, Andy mm -hmm. Skirna, when you said Ginger Rogers, that you meant you weren't talking about this. <laughs> That's the last chat I think I saw. I, I think Ginger Rogers was an answer for something else. Um, but um, but the two African American actresses, mm -hmm. one was Cicely Tyson, oh, and yeah. the other one was Diana Ross, both nominated for Academy Awards in 1972. Um, so it seems like to me it was Billie Holiday <laughs> that made it happen. Um, so I'm gonna break tradition and I'm gonna go with the newbie, even though it's hard to, Viola Davis is always phenomenal, phenomenal is very, very close. Um, and she will always be the official Broadway's Calling winner, yes. but I'm gonna have to go Andre, Andre Davis. Who, uh, what about you, Andrea? Oh, so I haven't seen all the movies, just bits mm -hmm. and pieces. And I do love Frances McDormand, but I think mm -hmm. she, I, I, you know, and I'm kind of pulling for maybe Carrie Mulligan. Oh, okay. You know, only because I didn't get to see all of the movie. I'm halfway mm -hmm. through, so I'm going to try to catch the rest of it tonight. And so mm -hmm. far, I'm like, whoa. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's whoa. Whoa. Right? Oh, it's so, whoa. It's whoa. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll be popping some corn later on. And <laughs> well, those of you who haven't seen these movies, but will be watching them throughout the week, mm -hmm. uh, this episode will be in perpetuity on our YouTube channel. Um, and um, you can go to the YouTube channel and then catch up on like maybe Andrea's Broadway Bites recipe if you need to get that. Um, any of the hashtags that you want to like, you know, take off here. But our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Broadway's Calling. And you can see the episode. But once you see a movie and you get a choice for one of the categories, write them in the comments because I would love all this week for us to just have like, you know, leading up to the Oscars for next week and our great guest who's going to be coming. Um, it would just be fun to just sort of keep a tally of like which supporting actor, supporting actress, lead actor, lead actress is like winning amongst our Broadway calling family. So I hope that you, uh, you watch the movies that we're talking about and that you go to our YouTube channel and mm -hmm. you actually write in the comments who your pick is going to be. And it would just be, it will just be very, very exciting to like see what, you know, what, who that is going to be. Um, and of course, um, I expect everyone for best supporting actress to choose. <laughs> When close. All right. So that's that's all I'm saying. I I'm just, that's all I'm saying. Now next week we will also talk about the other uh, progresses within the industry as well as how exciting it is to capture the new stories. Uh, you know, we we're just talking about the inclusivity of the artists who are nominated this year, and um, this is where my guest comes in because she's no stranger. Uh, to forging the way and being a trailblazer herself. And mm -hmm. she was one of my Jasmines when we did Aladdin at California Adventure, but she made history both as Cosette in the revival of Les Mis in 2006, and then became the first Asian American Christine in the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Allie Ewald will join me next week and wait till you hear her story and you hear that voice. Oh my goodness. Um, she's just a light and she has a great story. Um, and she's been in other shows as well, but these were the historic ones and uh, it's going to be very exciting. And uh, she's going to join me and we're going to do the Oscar show. So it'll be on next Sunday at 6 PM, mm. our normal Broadway's calling time. And uh, that will get you ready to launch you right into the red carpet and the Academy Awards next Sunday, which here on the East Coast, they will be on at um, 8 p.m. And so that means 5 p.m. on the West Coast. That's Figure out the math for Chicago. 
I'm like, wait a minute, how many hours? I'm always like trying to figure out how many hours uh, different. Um, and so the dress code, you know, Julie was wondering, or mm. should we wear gowns and tuxedos or should we and Andrea and I were talking about maybe like fancy Thank pajamas <laughs> I don't know what are you guys right. <laughs> I mean a tiara whatever put it in the chat if you have an an uh an idea like what should we do should we wear like fancy pajamas and sweats or <laughs> um or should we wear like really get Hollywood out and get ready for the Oscars uh just give us you know Tell us what we should do. We'll do it all. We'll, it's all for you guys. And it's it's all fun. And um, it's all for our subscribers. And and I do want to thank once again, I think we're well over 600 subscribers. And um, we're headed on our way to 1,000, which is our goal. And um, we would love for you, if you had fun watching the show, like share it on your social uh, platforms on Facebook Live, which is where we are uh, as well today. And tell your friends. Watch some old episodes. Oh, Let's yeah. have a good, good time, y'all. We have some great stories, and we will continue to tell great stories. And um, I hope that you also go to our website and fill out a ballot so you can win all the prizes. Broadwayscallingtv.com is where <laughs> the ballot is, and it will be live uh, later on this evening, probably after midnight East Coast time. And um, I just hope that you guys are stoked for the Oscars. Andrea, are you stoked for the Oscars? I am. And I just read somebody wants me to bring out the boas. Or oh, all the boas. You have boas, Andrea? It's. I'll have to look. I, I, I have a little box of stuff. I might have oh. something in there. And well, then that's... anything that's bedazzled, I'm so for that. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, okay. Okay, well, well, we'll be bedazzled. We'll have boas. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fantastic. Black tie. We're going to have it. All that sounds week. like they want us to dress up. <laughs> yes, I think dress up is well. Also, if you guys are dressing up and mm -hmm. having champagne, uh, feel free to send pictures and we'll put it on the website, yeah. you know, and that'd be a lot, a lot of fun to see how you watch Broadway's Calling uh, next week and how you dressed and got ready for the Oscars. And, uh, maybe uh, then, um, I'll answer, sorry, uh, like share what you like to eat during the Oscars. Yes, right? I already think about food. I'm always, I'm, I'm already thinking. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make like homemade Chex Mix or something like that, right? You need like a little snack rooney. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Something. Absolutely. I'm going to have probably like little like steak sandwiches or something. Ooh, or I don't know, something, just something tasty. But this is the year to watch the Oscars, you guys. I mean, because it's so diverse and we don't know which way it's going to go. Will we go with the, you know, the, veteran Academy Award winners um, or the, the new young artists who are popping up who are like doing phenomenal work um, in all of the movies. Nothing is definite. So it's going to be a nail biter. So yeah. it is going to be exciting to watch. And then, you know, again, we can just, you know, write things in the comment even mm -hmm. on next week show too, uh, you know, when Ali is here and even after that uh, doing the Oscars. Uh, but I just want to say, be safe, be sane, and send <laughs> energy for Glenn Close to win the Oscar. <laughs> and um, I just want to thank you for joining me, Andrea and Julie, uh, to talk about the Oscars. And I and I hope that all of you out there are like really stoked now to watch the show because uh, I I know Andrea is, I know Julie is. I know that I am. Oh. Uh, so like I said, be safe, be sane, keep a little Broadway in your life. Yes. I'm Lance Roberts. And I'm Andre Boyer. And before we sign out, I have to announce something for Lance really quick. Uh oh. Lance, I am awarding you with the best Broadway show. Oh, thank right? you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is. I think I'm, I'm telling you, Lance Roberts to me is is just the most phenomenal Broadway person I know. And you are the Robert Osborne. I say that to you all the time. Oh, thank you. Of, of Broadway. And I, I really see that. If I need to know anything about Broadway, I'm going to call Lance. So I want to give this to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think it's coming. 
It's coming. Oh my God, it came all the way over. <laughs> It even transformed. It transformed into from our cadaver ray. You guys are killing me right now. Wait, when she brought that out, I was like, wait a minute. I think I can reach the, uh, this is actually Ben Fankhauser's winning <laughs> trophy. And and, uh, uh, and Ben hasn't come back to the city yet because he was out of town, but he's getting ready to do a new show in town. And so he'll finally get it. But we've been oh, holding exciting. on to uh, this for Ben because he had the winning video from Cadaver Ray. So we had to do some little uh, internet magic. Thank you, Andrea. That was fun. See, Christina Kanashiro says he deserves it. And well, I agree thank with you, her. Christina. Oh, my God. God. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you guys. It's been a fantastic show. This is so exciting. And I really am like still to watch the movies. I'm like tonight. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait. Um, I'm probably going to watch Minari and Sound of Metal tonight mm -hmm. um, of the two that I haven't seen. So I hope that you guys watch the movies and, and vote in our ballot. And, um, and we'll see you next Sunday at 6 p.m. We will. Peace. Bye-bye.